So in 56, we're given a sequence of real numbers which is defined recursively. And we talked a little bit about this a week ago. Um, a recursive sequence is just one where we say what the first term is, and then every term is constructed in the same way out of the previous term. So in this example, every term is constructed by taking the previous one, adding one to it, and then taking the square root. So if we start with one, then the next term is the square root of one plus one. The next term is the square root of one plus that. The next term is the square root of one plus that. The next term is the square root of one plus that, and so on. So that's what this recurrence formula at the end is telling us, right? How to make each term out of the previous term. Um, and so our ultimate goal in number 56 is to show that this sequence is convergent. Um, but that would be a nightmare to do if we're just using epsilon n straight ahead. Um, one of the reasons it would be a nightmare is we don't have an explicit formula that tells us how n relates to tn. Right? We only have this formula that tells us how the nth term relates to the n minus first term. Um, so we're going to get at this in a different way. We're going to go at it from the side. We're going to go at it by showing that the sequence is non-decreasing and that the sequence is bounded above by 2. Why is that enough? If I can prove those two things, why are we done? Um, because if the sequence is um, non-decreasing, it's monotonic. Yes. It's also bounded to an theoretically Very good. Absolutely. So part A is going to prove to us that this sequence is monotonic. Part B is going to prove to us that the sequence is bounded. And probably the most celebrated result in the whole chapter, the monotone convergence theorem, tells us that these two things together give us a sequence which is convergent. So we're trying to apply the monotone convergence theorem to this sequence. So we just need to justify those two claims, that this is a monotonic sequence and that this is a bounded sequence. Um, and each of those two things, because we have a recursion that defines our sequence, the most natural tool to use is induction. So in our induction proof, um, we need three things. We need the base case that's going to get us started. And since the quantification of my k is that k is greater than or equal to 1, what should my base case be? k equals 1. And so in the case k equals 1, what we need to show is we need to show that, uh oh, that t sub k minus 1 is less than or equal to tk. Well, that doesn't quite make sense when k is equal to 1, right? So this is actually my fault. Um, I should have probably written this as tk is less than or equal to tk plus 1, because there's no such thing as t0 in this sequence. Um, so the other way we could do that is we could just change this to k greater than or equal to 2. Uh, it would still have the same meaning. So this is my fault. This is a typo I'll have to fix for, uh, for future iterations of this. I think the easiest way to fix it is just to make this k greater than or equal to 2, in which case that's going to be our new base case. Yeah, that was an oversight on my part. So for k equals 2, what, we need, what is it that we need to show? We need to show that t sub k minus 2 is less than or equal to t sub k. Well, do we know that t1 is less than or equal to t2? What is t1 one. and t2? Yeah, if we believe, and I think we can all agree together that the square root of 2 is, in fact, greater than 1, um, then, then we're good on the base case. Um, the next step is to make our induction hypothesis. This is the step that I don't like to leave out. And in the induction hypothesis, we get to assume something. What do we get to assume? That yes. Assume that the kth proposition in my sequence is in fact true. So we get to assume that tk minus 1 is less than or equal to tk. And by the way, we have a formula which tells us how these two things are related to one another. So why don't we, why don't we plug that in right now? Um, what is tk in relation to tk minus 1? I.e. So this is a good place to remember that this formula is what defines the t's. Um, tk minus 1 is less than or equal to the square root of tk minus 1 plus 1. Right, 
And so we're using this definition of our sequence, plugging it in here for TK. So this is something that we get to assume is true, right? that the K minus first term is less than or equal to, uh, it's the square root of itself plus one. If we assume that, then what is it that we want to show using that induction hypothesis? So in the induction case, uh, let me annotate this off to the side, right? In the induction <coughs> hypothesis, we assume that the kth proposition is true. And in the inductive step, we want to prove which statement is true. Is k the k plus one? Yeah, prove that the k plus first statement is true. So if I replace k by k plus 1, that's what I now need to prove. So it's not that I want to prove that tk minus 1 is less than tk. It's that I want to prove that tk plus 1 minus 1 is less than tk plus 1. Okay. Uh, let me color code this a little better, sorry. Minus, this minus 1 came from there. <laughs> so when I replace k by k plus 1, now that's the statement that I want to prove. Uh, but if I just simplify that out a little bit, what I'm trying to prove is that tk, I didn't plug that hole very well, tk is less than or equal to tk plus 1. Um, so now that's what I want to show. The tricky part of any induction proof is figuring out how to take a statement like this and turn it into a form that allows me to use my induction hypothesis. So right now, in my statement that I want to prove, I only have tk's and tk plus 1's. What I need to do is get a statement that has tk's and tk minus 1's in it. Right? Because then I have something I can say, because we've assumed that this is true. So how are we going to turn, let's say, tk into a statement that has only tk minus 1's? Well, what's the relationship between tk and tk minus 1? OK, so tk is greater than or equal to tk minus 1. So that's, that's one thing that we know from the induction hypothesis. Um, the problem is that just knowing that up front is not quite enough to help us to prove that tk is less than or equal to something. Right? If we know that tk is greater than or equal to something, it doesn't tell us what it's less than or equal to. So this is true, but we might not be able to use it yet. Can we just use the, the T, the, that one? This, this one? Yeah. Or this one? Yeah. Or really, really either one, I or suppose. Right, right. Let's use the recursion formula. Um, so continuing down here, we'll say, well, what is TK? TK is equal to the square root of TK minus 1 plus 1 right. by the recursion formula. Um, and what is tk plus 1 by definition? The square root of the square root? Well, yeah, but that's going one step too far. Um, let's use the recursion formula again, this time with n replaced by k plus 1. tk plus 1 minus 1, tk. So what we want to show now is we want to show that and tk plus 1 is the square root of tk plus 1. So what we'd really like to show is we really want to show that this is less than or equal to that. Uh, okay. What happens if I square both of these quantities? Let's, let's see if we can just forget about the square root for a minute. tk plus 1 squared is tk plus 1. What if I show that this is less than that? 
then it should follow, taking square roots, that this is less than that. Which, by the way, is not an obvious statement. It's obvious, in fact, only, it's only true necessarily if the TKs are all positive. Um, otherwise, we might lose a sign when we try to make this comparison. But since the TKs are all positive, we can get away with squaring both sides and, and replacing them with the squares. Um, but how do I know that this is less than that? Yeah, now is the time when we can apply our induction hypothesis. We know that the TK minus 1s are less than or equal to the TKs. Therefore, when I add 1 to both sides, the TK minus 1 plus 1s are less than or equal to the TK plus, uh, the TK plus 1s. And if that's less than that, then by my induction, uh, uh, sorry, by our um, recurrence relationship, let's try and write this in a forward direction here. So we actually have a readable proof. So what did we say here? So TK um, is equal to TK plus 1 minus 1. That's maybe one way to think about it. But um, we know that TK plus 1, by definition, is equal to TK minus 1 squared. So this is TK minus 1 squared. Um, minus 1. But tk minus 1 is less than or equal to tk by my induction hypothesis. So now I'm going to plug that in right here. So then this is less than or equal to tk squared minus 1. But using our definition of the sequence one more time, what is tk squared? It's the square root of, or sorry, tk squared um, is, so I screwed this up. This should be tk plus 1 squared. Oh, but now I can't use the induction hypothesis. All right, this is probably the, the, the way I should have looked at it. Right? So uh, if we want to show that tk is greater than, so less than or equal to tk plus 1, then what we're really trying to show is that after we apply the definition of the sequence and square both sides and rearrange them, we can see that it's equivalent to tk minus 1 being less than or equal to tk. Um, so working with inequalities is a mess, <laughs> isn't it? Um, so we have that tk squared is equal to um, tk minus 1 plus 1. But by our induction hypothesis, tk minus 1 is less than or equal to tk. But what is tk plus 1? It's tk plus 1 squared, using the thing that we had in the upper right. And so with this, we've proven that tk squared is less than or equal to tk plus 1 squared. And then since the t's are all positive, we can take a square root on both sides of that inequality, and we've proven that tk is less than or equal to tk plus 1.